before you and I was even a thought, when there was nothing, I want you to know that God was busy and that God was at work. Today, some believe that the Lord our God is on vacation as our world burns in a mess. But I tell you all again today that God is at work. God is always at work. But the question is this, do you believe it? Do you realize that the Lord, our God is at work? I want you to know today that God does not take any breaks. God, he does not take any time off. Now, some will hear that and they will ask, believing that they are wiser than all, they will ask, what about the Sabbath? God took a break then, is what some will say. Some will again ask, what about the Sabbath? And my response would be to ask, what about it? Sabbath, the day of rest. A day I would tell you that is not well understood. Do you know that Jesus had to correct the Jews when it came to their understanding on the day of the Sabbath? Here in our key verse for today's message, Jesus, he plainly said to the Jews, my father has been working until now and I have been working. As we know, God is the Father, God is the Son, God is the Holy Spirit. All three persons are one and have been working together even before the time of man. In the book of Genesis, we see the Spirit of God present as it hovered over the waters and moved to form all of creation. In John's gospel, in the first chapter and in the first verse, John spoke of how the only begotten son, the word, was also there in the beginning. Here in the fifth chapter of John's gospel, it is recorded that Jesus here in this chapter had healed a lame man. And we are specifically told here in the first verse through the 17th verse that Jesus had healed a lame man on the day of Sabbath, the day of rest. The man, after he was healed, Jesus told him to take his bed and to walk. So this man, he, he, he stood to his feet. He carried the bed that he had laid on while waiting at the pool of Bethesda to be healed. And he moved, he walked with it. The act of carrying his bed, it was something the religious leaders, we see that they frowned at. They didn't like it too much. So these religious leaders we see in this passage of scripture, they confronted the man who had just been healed. They carried the man because he carried his bed on the Sabbath, the day of rest. In their eyes, the man was doing work. In their eyes, the man was laboring on the day of rest. Their frustration was then carried over to Jesus when they found out that it was Jesus that healed the man and told the man to carry his bed on the day of Sabbath. So I want you to understand that the religious leaders, they were angry at the fact that work they was angry at the fact that labor was being carried out on the day of Sabbath, the day where God rested. And again, I, I say to you all today that this rest, Sabbath, it is a day that is not understood very well. In response to their frustration, Jesus, if I were to paraphrase my key verse to you, he said to them, my father has been working until now and I am working 
this very moment. Yes, Jesus, God in the flesh, was clearly putting in work on the day of rest. On the day where God supposedly stopped working for a moment in time. Now, this was not the only time that the religious leaders were frustrated with Jesus' working on the day of rest. On another occasion, the religious leaders, they watched to see if Jesus would heal a man with a withered hand on Sabbath so that they could raise accusation against him. Jesus, on that Sabbath, he healed the man with the withered hand, no matter their thoughts, no matter their opinion. On another Sabbath, prior to the man with the withered hand, Jesus and the disciples, they went through a grain field. And as they went through that grain field, the disciples, they decided to pluck the heads of the grain and they ate them. And this, it again, it drew the ire of the religious leaders who accused the disciples of not being lawful because they again labored. They did work on the day of rest. They labored on the day of Sabbath, the day where God had rested. In other words, we'll see here that God or Jesus said to them, the son of man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. This Jesus said to the religious leaders there to let them know that his thoughts on Sabbath it superseded their thoughts, their ideas on the day of rest. It superseded their thoughts because he, Jesus, is God in the flesh. Sabbath, it again is seemingly very misunderstood. It is misunderstood seemingly as the one day that God stopped working. Imagine that a day where God stops working. I want you to know that that understanding, it is very lacking. The quote unquote day of rest as recorded in Genesis was the, the day where the Lord completed his work of creation. After finishing his creation, I want you to know, God continued working. He continued working by overlooking his creation. God did not take his eyes off of what he had just completed. He was still overlooking creation. God did not take a day off. Again, I tell you today that God is at work. To this very day, the Lord is still overlooking his creation. To this very day, God is still ruling over his creation. Again, I say to you today that God is at work. Oh, yes. The prophet Isaiah said of God to all of Israel, have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. I say to you today, God is always at work. The Lord, I want you to know today, he neither faints nor is he weary. The Lord, I want you to hear and I want you to know today he is working on the behalf of all of those who genuinely love and who genuinely believes in him. Do you love the Lord today? Do you believe in the Lord today? If you love the Lord today and if you believe in him today, I want you to know that God is at work for you today. 
Now, sometimes we question whether or not the Lord is truly at work for us. Sometimes we are able to tell it. Sometimes we are able to see that the Lord is working. We are able to see that God is moving on our behalf. And in these moments of times where we can tell that God is moving, that, that God is at work for us, those times they are very reassuring to us as believers. In other words, it gives us comfort in our hearts that, that we can see that God is moving, that we can see that God is at work for us. However, most of the times, the Lord is moving, God is working for us when we are unable to see it. God is often working for us when we cannot tell it, when we cannot realize it. And these are the moments that make many of us grow concerned. And, and we begin to wonder, and we begin to ask, whether or not God is, is moving, whether or not God is at work on our behalf. I say to you today that we should rest assured that God is always at work on our behalf. Even in those moments when you cannot see him working and moving on your behalf, I say to you today that you should rest assured that God is at work for you. The genuine believer should be of true faith that God is at work for them or for you every second of every day. As the writer of Hebrews said about faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not what? Things not seen. God is at work for you today. But again, I ask you this question. Do you believe it? Do you believe that God is at work on your behalf? Even when you may not see it, do you believe it? You see, scripture is filled with several times where God's work is actually clearly seen and recognized by mankind. Going back to Old Testament days in the book of Genesis, the Lord's work, it was clearly seen and witnessed by Noah, wasn't it? It was witnessed by Noah and it was witnessed by Noah's family as well. After he built the ark, Noah, he did not have to go out and fetch the creatures that were to board the ark. No, God did some work, didn't he? Those creatures, they came to the ark. Not on their own, but because God had actually led them there doing work. Not only that, but Noah, he, he witnessed the floods. God brought the rain. Noah, he witnessed the draining of the water, didn't he? God drained the water. Not only that, but Noah and his family, they set foot on dry ground. This again was all done because God was at work. Again, in the book of Genesis, Abraham was one that literally witnessed the Lord's work with his own eyes. The Lord face to face spoke with Abraham about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah the day before it actually happened. The next day, scripture tells us that when Abraham looked in the direction of Sodom and Gomorrah, he witnessed with his own eyes, he witnessed the Lord move against Sodom and Gomorrah. Still in Old Testament days, Moses and the children of Israel, they literally witnessed God's work with their own eyes. They witnessed his work happening before them. While they were in the bondage of Egypt, what did the Lord do? God, he plagued Pharaoh and the land of Egypt with plague after plague. 
And the children of Israel watched. They witnessed as God revealed his great power to the world. I would say to you today, even today, we are able to see that God is at work through nature, not only through nature, but there are all kinds of miracles that are happening around us. Not because we have the power to make the miracles happen, but because God is still at work today. I tell you today that I am a living miracle. I am a testimony of God being at work today. And you could see God working through me today. If only we was actually opening our eyes to see it. Yeah, I, I say to you today that faith is not about what we can see. Because as many witnessed the parting of the Red Sea, many still did not believe. As many witnessed the blind and the lame healed, and many were there to witness a man being raised from the dead by Christ. Many still did not believe. As it is said by Paul, we must walk by faith and not by sight. Do you believe God is at work today, even when you cannot see the Lord moving for you? Are you walking by faith or are you choosing to walk by sight? Again, Paul said we must walk by faith. Are you walking by faith today? Now, while scripture shows us that the Lord's work has been seen by us, by those of the New Testament and by those of the Old Testament days, scripture also shows us that God's work is often not seen or recognized right away by mankind, doesn't it? In his day of stress and in his day of trouble, for example, Job would say of the Lord, I go forward, but he is not there. Job said that he would go backwards, but he could not perceive him. Job said where he God works on the left hand, I cannot behold him. Job was searching for God to, to work and to move before him. He was, he was looking to see God working for him, but he could not see it. Job said that when God turns to the right hand, that he could not see him. But then Job, he, he came to the conclusion where he said that, where he said, God knows the way that I take. In all things, even though I can't find him, even though that I can't see him, he still knows the ways that I go. He knows what I am going through. He knows where I am. The Lord is omnipotent. The Lord is omniscient. God is omnipresent. He is all powerful. He is all knowing and he is everywhere at all times. Guess what God is doing? Being all powerful, being all knowing and being everywhere at all times. God is moving. God is working. God isn't sitting on his hands. God isn't on break. God is not on vacation. God is moving. God is working for all of us, even when we cannot perceive it. Even though we look to our left and we cannot see him, God is moving. Even though we look to our right and we cannot see him, God is moving. Even when we look right ahead of us and we cannot see him, God is moving. When we turn around and we cannot see him, God is at work for us. David on this same thought said that the Lord knows our thoughts, our sitting down and our rising up and understands all of our ways. This goes for every single person, righteous and unrighteous. Well, we are often unaware of all that goes on around us. God, I want you to hear and know today, God is never in the dark as to all that is going on around us. God, he moves. God, he works in the arena of all things that we are unaware of. Listen to that today. 
God, he works in that arena of all things that you are presently and even in the future and back in the past, God moved in that arena of things that you were totally unaware of. To me, this is where the Lord's best work takes place in that arena of the invisible. In the book of Numbers, we see an example of the Lord moving and working in the invisible arena on the behalf of the children of Israel. The book of Numbers, it follows the children of Israel on their journey to the promised land. And as we know, their journey, it was not an easy one. And it often led them to being at odds with Moses, and therefore they were at odds with the Lord as well. And, you know, I often liken their journey to the promised land. I often liken their journey to our journey of faith. Because we too, we are on a journey to the promised land of the heavenly kingdom. And on our journey, we know that our journey, it too, is not an easy one. And we often find ourselves at odds with the Lord. We find ourselves often on occasion at odds with his direction, what he is doing or what we believe he is not doing for us. Now, for the children of Israel, and again, for most of us as well, the main issue that they faced on their journey to the promised land was their lack of faith. And that's an issue that, again, many of us have today in God, our lack of faith. For example, while on their journey, the children of Israel, they complained about only having manna to eat as opposed to the finer things that they used to eat when they was in the bondage of Egypt. Many of us, again, I tell you, we are the same way. We, we often struggle to be happy with the things that God has blessed us with because we look with these eyes at the things that we want and the things that we don't have. We say to ourselves, God hasn't given that to us yet. And we find ourselves again, not being so happy with the Lord and again, his direction and, and what God is quote unquote, not doing for us. When the Lord brought the children of Israel to the point of entering into the promised land, the children of Israel, they refused to enter the land because they let the doubt in the hearts of some influence them not to move forward into the promised land. The thoughts that, that lie within the hearts that that's what leads us in our actions. So we would be foolish to think that the thoughts and the actions that lie in the hearts and then come out of those that are around us, we would be foolish to, to think for one second that those thoughts and actions do not influence us in, in the way that we choose to take and in the actions that we choose to move in. Because of their refusal to enter into the promised land, the children of Israel, we know that they were made to wander in the wilderness for an entire generation until that generation that sinned passed away. Even though they had rejected the Lord's blessing, the Lord, I want you to know, was still with the children of Israel. And I want you to know that God was still moving and working on their behalf. On their journey through the wilderness, the children of Israel, they would encounter several enemies that would stand against them. From the Canaanites to the Amorites, they would end up having to do battle against these enemies. Sounds a lot like us today, doesn't it? The scripture shows us that the children of Israel, they, at that point in time, they chose to be obedient. And they chose to be of faith, be faithful to the Lord. And because of their faith, God moved and, and delivered up the enemies of Israel into their hands. And by this, they were the children of Israel. They were victorious 
over those, over all that, that opposed them, all that, that stood against them. When God is at work for you, victory, I want you to know it is assured to you. Did you hear that there today? I want you to know that when God is at work for you, you will overcome all obstacles that you face on your journey. I want you to know today that when God is at work for you, you will be blessed. You will again be victorious. Now, Israel's victories, they did not go unnoticed. Just like your victories, they don't go unnoticed today. Balak, the king of Moab, he was paying very close attention and he saw the success of Israel. He saw their successes over his neighbors in the region. And we're told that if you want to turn to the 22nd chapter of Numbers, you can. We're told in the second through the fourth verse there in the 22nd chapter of Numbers that this man, this Balak, the king of Moab, we're told that he grew fearful of Israel as he assumed that their next victory, their next success would come at the cost of his and his people's life. So as the children of Israel relaxed and as they camped nearby in the plains of Moab, Balak, he came up with a plan in his heart to move against the children of Israel. Now, the children of Israel, as they rested in the plains of Moab, I want you to know that they were completely unaware of this king's motivations his intentions towards them, the actions that he was taking. Again, I, I tell you that, that many of us, we are in this very same position today. Somebody is watching you right now, this very moment, and they realize that you, the child of God, you, the one of genuine faith, they realize that you are blessed. They know that you are highly favored in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. They see your blessings and they can't stand it in their hearts. Mm -hmm. And they, in their hearts, desire to move against you. Why do you think so many people stand in the, against you today and oppose you in your faith? They see that you are blessed and happy in your faith and they stand against you tell you today that there are a lot of Baleks in our world today. And so we'll see here that Balak, he sent for a fortune teller. We're told there in the fifth and in the sixth verse, this fortune teller, his name was Balaam. Balak, he, he sent for this fortune teller because he desired for Balaam to curse the children of Israel. Balak, wanted the children of Israel to be cursed because of their successes, moving against them when they were totally unaware. Thankfully, thank God that, that God is at work for us today when we are completely unaware of all that is going on around us. Thankfully, God is at work and is completely aware of all that is going on around us. This happened to be the case for the children of Israel. God was at work, overlooking, watching, knowing the hearts of all people, knowing what was in the heart of Balak, knowing that this king desired to move against the children of Israel. Israel, they had done nothing to this man, but this king, he desired greatly to move against them. And I often wonder, I wonder this to myself, how many curse us while we are unaware of it? Because we are blessed and because we are highly favored in the Lord's eyes. We also know that 
we wrestle against more than the flesh, but that we wrestle against uh, enemies and rulers of darkness, principalities and spiritual hosts of wickedness as well. Though the children of Israel were unaware of Balak's motivations, we find that the Lord was moving ahead of Balak. Scripture tells us that the Lord came to the fortune teller, came to Balaam there in the ninth through the 12th verse, and directed this fortune teller not to go with the people that Balak was sent his way. God told Balaam not to curse the children of Israel. Why? Because the children of Israel, in God's words, were blessed. You see, this was God moving on behalf of those that were blessed. This was God moving on behalf of the children of Israel with them having no knowledge of what was going on at that time. This was God moving in that invisible arena. God, I want you to know today, is at work for you in a like manner as he works in that invisible arena, within the hearts of all of those that are around you. God, I want you to understand today, he's at work also behind the scenes, as we would say. And after being visited by the Lord, scripture shows us that Balaam rose in the morning and said there in the 13th verse to the messengers that Balak had sent his way, go back, go back to your land for the Lord has refused to give me permission to go with you. Again, all of this was happening with the children of Israel having no knowledge that God was, was moving, that God was at work protecting them behind the scenes. Imagine what God is doing for you today behind the scenes in that invisible arena. Now, this was a word that did not please Balak. And he sent the messengers again to the fortune teller. And for a second time, we'll see Balaam, the fortune teller, say to the messengers there in the 18th verse, though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord, my God, to do less or to do more. Now, this fortune teller, a Gentile, I tell you, recognized the power and the authority of the one that spoke to him in his heart, the one that was moving and working in that invisible space, the one being the Lord, our God. Eventually, Balaam went and stood in person before Balak to deliver to Balak the word that the Lord had put in his mouth. In the 23rd chapter, in the 8th verse, we see that Balaam said to Balak, how shall I curse whom God has not cursed? How shall I denounce whom the Lord has not cursed? denounce said there in the 10th verse as we continue on who can count the dust of Jacob or number one fourth of Israel let me die the death of the righteous and my end be like this the righteous you see the children of Israel they were blessed and they were highly favored and nobody could move against them, no matter how hard they desired to move against them. The reason why nobody could do it was because God was at work behind the scenes, making a way for them, protecting them. This reminds me of Job in that the devil, he wanted badly to move against Job, but the devil could not move against him unless the Lord allowed the devil to do so. 
You see, God, he, he had a hedge about Job. Even though Job could not see that hedge, there was a hedge that was about him. God was at work on behalf of Job behind the scenes in that invisible arena. This also reminds me of the religious leaders that wanted to put an end to the spreading of the gospel. But Gamaliel raised up and said to them that nobody can overthrow the work of God. Nobody can overthrow the work of God in the physical and in the invisible. The work that God is doing for you today, because God is at work for you today, Nobody can overthrow it. No matter how much they desire to move against you, they cannot move against you. They cannot break you. They cannot destroy you because God is at work for you today. Now, Balak again did not like what he had heard in person from the fortune teller. We'll see that he exclaimed there in the 23rd chapter of Numbers and in the 11th verse, what have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies and look, you have blessed them bountifully. <laughs> Balaam didn't bless them. God had blessed them. They were blessed bountifully by the Lord. You, you are blessed bountifully by the Lord today. Whether you see it or not, you are blessed bountifully by God today. People, yes, they may try to curse you. And our spiritual enemy may even move in the dark against you. But I tell you today that we are in the hands of God. And because we are in the hands of God, nobody can take us out of his Mighty hands. Do you hear that there today? God, we should understand by now is the sovereign ruler over the visible and the invisible. As Paul wrote to the Colossians for by him, for by God, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible whether the thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. God is in control over all things visible and invisible. You better believe it today that the Lord is still watching over and ruling over the visible and the invisible. All things, you better believe it, all things are under his control. The Lord, I want you to understand today, works in multiple aspects of our lives. Even when we happen to think that God isn't there, that God isn't at work, the Lord is at work in multiple aspects of your life. Though we may not see it nor recognize God's invisible work right away, I also want to say to you today that his works, the invisible works, eventually do come to light and can be perceived by us. To the Romans, Paul wrote, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by things that are made that is his works, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God's works in the visible and in the invisible, they eventually will be perceived. They eventually will be recognized and there will be no excuse for any of us saying that we've never seen God move on our behalf. There is no excuse for us to ever doubt that the Lord is working on our behalf because we have proof through the lives that we have lived thus far. You have proof. You have seen it that God is at work for you. Look where you are today. You would not be where you are today if God was not at work 
for you. I want you to know today that God is at work and that there is a work that the Lord is doing for you today. Even though you may not see it, even though you may not recognize it. As we have seen here today, there are times when God is at work and we can perceive his work. Yet there are several times where God is at work for us and we are unaware of it. But we know that God is moving to our benefit. We know that God is shielding and protecting us from our enemies. And we know that God is making a way for us. By now, all of us, we should know that God has our back. Do you know that God's got your back today? Through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord declared that he is always doing something new for us. And the new thing that he is doing, it will spring forth. Now, we may not see the Lord working on that new thing for us today, but let us rest assured that God is at work on the new thing for us. Rest assured today that when the Lord's new thing, when his blessing, it is done, it is going to spring forth for you. You will know it, you will perceive it, and you will be blessed, you will be victorious. Amen, amen, amen. God is at work for you today, and I certainly hope that you believe it and that you will live in that faith that God is at work for you.